Good day grade 10s, welcome to Exponents um, in week number 5. Today we're going to be basically using the rules that we've learned last week and we're going to be looking at simplifying exponential expressions. So let's start off with this example here and I just need to get a pen. Right, so if we look at this expression we can see that we have got exponents on the denominator which have all got the same base, 3, 3 and 3. And we know that if we've got exponents with the same base that obviously we can, sorry I just want to fix the sound, there we go. If we've got exponents of the same base, then obviously we can do stuff with the exponents. We can obviously then add stuff or subtract, okay, or divide or whatever. Um, but we need this 9 to be the same base as well. But that's pretty easy because we know that 3 squared is 9. So we can rewrite this as 3 squared all to the power of 2n minus 1. Now we've learned that if we've got common bases, what can we do with the exponents? Well, if the common bases have been multiplied together, we know that we can add the exponents. And this here is, remember that if it's just a 3, it means that it's implied 1. We obviously don't write that 3 to the 1 is obviously just 3. So now, let's rewrite it. So that becomes 3 to the 3n plus 1 plus n minus 3, that's that over there, plus 1 over there. Right, so let's simplify this. So we know, we've learned, that if you've got an exponent within the bracket, an exponent out of the bracket, what do the brackets mean? They just mean times. So it becomes 3 to the 2 times 2 is 2 to the, it becomes 3 to the 4n, and then 2 times minus 1 is minus 2, all over. Now let's add up these exponents. So we've got 3n plus n is also 4n. And plus 1 minus 3 is minus 2, but then we've got a plus 1 again, so it becomes minus 1. Now again, what's convenient is we've got a common base in both the top and the bottom. So because we've got a common base on the top and bottom of a fraction, what are we doing? We're dividing. So that means that we can subtract the exponents. So we've got a common base of 3, and it becomes 4n minus 2 minus 4n minus 1. And you'll notice that I've put brackets here. It's very important for you guys to remember to put the brackets here. Because if you don't, you're going to maybe forget that a minus times a minus makes a plus, and then your sum is going to be incorrect. So let's work this out together. So 3, that's 4n minus 2. We're just bringing that down. A minus times a plus is a minus 4n, and then minus times a minus is plus 1. So do you see where you could have made a mistake if you didn't put those brackets in? So please be careful about that. So common base of 3, 4n minus 4n is 0, which goes away, it's awesome. Minus 2 plus 1 is a minus 1, and what does that mean? That means it's 1 over 3. So that there is the answer and of the simplified version of that there. Let's do another example. Here we've got a slightly more complicated version because you will see that we've got different bases. We've got 6 to the x minus 2, 2 to the x plus 2, 4 to the x minus 3, and 3 to the x minus 4. And the trick is to try and get everything to the same bases, and if we can't, then at least try and get similar bases for as many things as possible. So if we look at 6, we need to see what we can break it down. Now 6 has factors of, the set of factors are 1, 2, 3, and 6. Now there are a couple of things we can do to make this very easy for us. First of all, we can see already that we've got our smallest bases are 2 and 3. So obviously if we could take this 6 and break it down into 2 and 3, then that would be make it nice and easy. But the rule is, the rule is to try and break your numbers down into prime factors. And prime factors are prime numbers that are factors of your number. And if we look at this, we know that 1 times 6 makes 6, I agree, but 1 is not a prime number and 6 is definitely not a prime number. So obviously the numbers that we're looking at are 2 and 3, which happen to be these bases here. So life is good. Okay, so now 6 becomes 2 times 3, all to the power of x minus 2, 
times by 2 to the x plus 2, I'm just bringing that over, all over 4, we know this is very easy, it just becomes 2 to the 2, all to the power of x, times by 3 to the x minus 4. Now what I want to do next is I want to break this bracket up, but just so it's nice and easy and all separated out into their bases. So this becomes 2 to the x minus 2, times by 3 to the x minus 2, and then we're just carrying down this 2 to the x plus 2, all over 2 to the 2x times by 3 to the x minus 4. Now we know that the rule of exponents is that we can only simplify if they've got common bases. So let's look here. Do you see that we've got here 2 to the x minus 2? There is 2 to the x plus 2 and there is 2 to the 2x. So that means that we can add and subtract these exponents because they've got common bases. So we've got a common base of 2 this year, the, this 2 to the x minus 2 is being multiplied by 2 to the x plus 2, which means we can add their bases. So it becomes x minus 2 plus x plus 2, that's that over there, and then this is being divided. And if you're dividing and you've got a common base, what do you do with your exponents? You subtract, so it becomes minus 2x times by. Let's look at the threes, and I'm going to choose another color. So yeah, we've got three to the x minus two and three to the x minus four. So again, because we're dividing, what can we do? We've got common base, and we're dividing. We subtract the exponents, so it becomes three to the x minus two minus. Remember your bracket, x minus four. 3 to the x minus 2 minus x minus 4. Okay, so now let us now go back to our red. Okay, so what does this become? It becomes 2 and we're going to make it nice and easy by adding our like terms. So you've got x plus x is 2x minus 2x is 0. Awesome. Minus 2 plus 2 is 0. So that's 2 to the 0. Now before I carry on, we know that 2 to the 0, anything to the 0 is just 1. So I can replace that with a one, which is awesome. And now let's carry on with our threes. So we've got three, and the first thing I want to do is get rid of that bracket. So it's going to be x minus two minus times a plus is a minus, it's minus x. Minus times a minus is a plus, it becomes plus four. And then obviously one times this thing here is just this thing. So it is three x minus x is 0, so it goes away, minus 2 plus 4 is 2, and therefore that is 9. So the answer for this is 9. Right, now let's look at something a little bit more complicated. Let's look at this. Now, the reason this is more complicated is in the previous example, if we just go back one, you can see there weren't any pluses or minuses, it was just two, you got your one exponent times by the other exponent, one exponent times the other exponent. So if we had similar exponents, we could have just cancelled. But now we've got a minus, okay, separating out two terms and a minus separating out two terms there. So do you see that we cannot just cancel things? We're actually going to have to look for common factors, take out the common factors, and then we can cancel. So, so in order to do this, what we need to do is instead of joining up our exponents, we're actually going to break up these exponents here. So let's start with that. Obviously, our base exponent is going to be 3 to the a, because you can see that you've got 3 to the a there, 3 to the a there, 3 to the a there, and 3 to the a. And then, unfortunately, we've got these unfortunate like minus 1s and plus 2s and plus 1s, but we're going to fix that now. So let's break that up. So we've got 3 to the a minus. So we need to break this up. So that becomes 3 to the a times by 3 to the minus 1, all over 3 to the a times by 3 squared, that's that a plus 2, minus 3 to the a times by 3 to the 1. Now if you look carefully, and we've already kind of mentioned it, you can see we've said that there, 3 to the a, 3 to the a, 3 to the a, 3 to the a, obviously that means what? We have a common factor of 3 to the a at the top, and we've got a common factor of 3 to the a at the 
bottom. So we can take out a 3 to the A at the top. And what are we left with? We have, and I'm going to just do it at the bottom as well so I don't change colors twice. 3 to the A at the bottom as well. Why? Because that's 3 to the A to the 3 to the A. And what are we left with? We are left with 3 to the A goes into the 3 to A once. So basically you're dividing. 3, D, 3 to the A divided by 3 to the A is once minus, that's that minus there that we're bringing down, 3 to the a into 3 to a is 1, 1 times 3 to the minus 1 is just 3 to the minus 1. Okay, again we're taking out this common factor here of 3 to the a and we're left with 3 squared minus 3, and I'm not writing the 1 because it's obvious, 3 to the 1 is 3. Right, now the best part about this is we get to cancel. So cancel, cancel, awesome. And what are we left with? So now we're left with 1 minus 3 to the minus 1. Now remember, what does this minus mean? It means 1 over 3 in this case. So it's 1 minus 1 over 3. 3 squared is 9, so it's 9 minus 3. If I rewrite that, 1 minus a third is 2 thirds divided by 6. When we divide, what do we do? We tip in times, so that becomes 2 over 3 times by 1 over 6, because remember there's an implied 1 here, then we can cancel the 2 and divide it into 6 becomes 3, multiply our numerators, 1 times 1 is 1 over 3 times 3 is 9, and that is the answer, the 1 over 9. Right, let's try one more example. Okay, so this looks a little bit complicated and it looks a bit scary, but there's a trick, and I'm going to show you what that trick is. So. Do you agree there's nothing we can do with this 3 to the x? This is just 3 to the x, and there's nothing we can do with the plus 1. So let's leave that. That is 3 to the x plus 1. Nothing we can do. Now, remember, always when you're doing maths problems, even if you can't see the final solution, just follow the rules. And the rules are that if we have got a 9 here, we need to get it into its prime factor and the prime factor of 9 is 3. So we rewrite this as 3 to the 2 because it's 3 squared x minus 1 which becomes 3 to the 2x minus 1 over 3 to the x plus 1. Now admittedly at this point if you haven't been shown the trick you might not know how to carry on with this but that's fine if you're in the exams and you get a problem like this because then at least you've already got half the mark. But now let me show you the trick and then you'll see that it's actually really easy and you can get all the marks. Okay, now you guys have factorized seriously until you are blue in the face. So you know that if I gave you x squared minus 1, that you will be able to factorize that into the difference of two squares. Agreed? That becomes x minus 1, x plus 1. Right. Now let's look at this 3 to the 2x. How could I rewrite that 3 to the 2x? Do you agree that I could rewrite that as 3 to the x times 3 to the x? Because x plus x is 3 to the 2x. But what can that be rewritten as? That can also be rewritten as 3 to the x squared. Ah, so do you see where the sneakiness is? This 3 to the 2x is actually the same thing as 3 to the x squared. That means that I could write, rewrite 3 to the 2x minus 1. could be rewritten, we don't, but it could be rewritten as 3 to the x all squared minus 1. And that there is exactly the same thing as this thing here, which means that this is the difference of two squares. So therefore, we can rewrite this as 3 to the x minus 1. 3 to the x plus 1, all over 3 to the x plus 1. And then you can see that this whole thing here is the same as that bracket there, so we get to cancel it. And what are we left with? We're left with 3 to the x minus 1. And that's the answer. So right, great tens, what I need you to do is go and make sure you understand this and then I want you to go practice, practice, practice and then do the assessment at the end of the section. Thank you very much. Have a great day.